<laughs> I always wanted to say I got a golden ticket, but that's not right. <laughs> yeah, I got a golden that. ticket. <laughs> um, Just regular cards, though, okay? Paper cards or cardboard or whatever. They are wonderful card stock. <laughs> just, Embossed. just wonderful. At the same time that you were going through the dimensional shutdown stairs, you received a message from Pike saying that they were uh, they had to, they were going to be following the people. Whoops, did I lose somebody? Uh, looks like everyone's back. Okay. Yeah. I'm having weird connection issues myself, so it might be me from time to time. Yeah, but what about your computer? Uh, no, it's uh -huh. computer's perfect. <laughs> yeah, Pike and Vastra, Richard and Percival. Pike and Vastra are doing most of the socializing at the at the dinner. Pike acting as uh, one of Vastra's close friends. Yeah, he had directed Richard and Percival to basically uh, start looking around the edges of the uh, dinner. <clears throat> look behind the scenes at the staff find out where the yellow tickets are going where the train is waiting for them and they found out that the, there's a special underground train by the encompassing railway located underneath the building that the dinner is being held, held on and they're currently waiting for everyone with the yellow tickets so they can take them home home they're forever home after the dinner can uh, finishes Pike and Vastra meet up with Richard and Percival down below, hidden so they can watch the train. You watch as everyone with the yellow ticket is hustled on board. And the moment the train starts taking off, the entire tunnel lights up with blue fire, and the train itself vanishes. Wild shit. Pike is able to lose somebody. I don't want to say Jerry Rick, but it's the other one. Oh, um I forget what they call it. Cobble together. Jiggery pokery. Yeah. Jiggery that's pokery. <laughs> that's it is jiggery pokery. <laughs> which is <laughs> basically <laughs> which is basically Jerry Rick. Through Jiggery Pokery, Mr. Pike and Vastra's help is able to reactivate the tunnel to create a dimensional shunt to where the train is going. And all four of you are transported. Oh, everybody's back together again. Yay. Hey. Or soon will be. Happy days are here again. So it's going to be a little interesting. We're going to have a three, about three themes going on currently. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so this is from the Stephen Moffat era, huh? <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> that was kind of rude, I'm sorry. We did not mention Stephen Moffat. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so whose scene is going first? Uh, the three scenes basically are <clears throat> Where is that? Come on, bring it up. <laughs> Alton, Jenny, and Strax, who are with Sir Arnold Heath, arriving on one part of the of the uh, huge cavern. Seen as with uh, Pike Vastra, Richard, and Percival. <laughs> Following the uh, other train coming to the cavern. And the third scene is with Klaus. 
who has been here for a few days now, completely confused about what's going on. Is it Klaus or is it Klaus? It's Klaus. Oh, missed opportunity. Okay. <laughs> oh, you are fallacious. It is I, Klaus the Dark Lord. <laughs> totally. <laughs> From Klaus's point of view, <clears throat> he was taking the subway home after work one night. He works as an NYC PD. Yep. Yeah, PD. He's your police officer, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, he was uh, taking the uh, subway home from work one night when a ghost train came. Phased right through his train, and he found himself and two other people lying on the floor of the ghost train, surrounded by steam boards. To immediately tie him up. I know you can't see it, but I'm just like giving you a big thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you were captured along with two other people that were on the subway by the ghost train and taken with these steam boards, who are all alight with electro electrical energy, and the train itself glowing a blue fire. To a vast cavern somewhere. Great. There is a huge ship in the middle of the cavern connected to a vast engine made out of really old looking tech. Steam pipes. Obvious electrical ladders. Am I like gagged or anything? Yeah, they tied you up pretty clear, pretty, pretty well. I, I meant like, am I able to talk? Well, you can talk around the gag. It's not a, It's not that like a total mouth gag. Alright, I'm gonna try to muffle out. Whoop, what's going on? Hello? Hello? Most of the steam boards around you, they look at you, but they don't really do anything. They just walk past you. <laughs> you are dragged with the two other people off of the train and carried across a small shanty town to a very large building that has a lot of electricity arcing into it from the ship above. Where you are put with the other two people in a small, small cage, about five foot square. From here you can see that there is a uh, process going on. <clears throat> there is a very tall man, thin, pale, his skin is almost translucent and his eyes seem to be glowing on a green fire as he's operating on other people. Shearing off what looks like an amputee's shoulder, beginning to reattach a complicated piece of steam board technology to it, suturing it in place. Uh, kind of looking at the two other people in the cage with me, what do they look like? Uh, it's a man and a woman. He's wearing a business suit. The woman is in her early 20s. She has... Yeah, she has ear pods and an iPad and everything. Right. But um, uh, the man is completely losing his crap. Like, he's just laying there sh shivering and shaking. His eyes are just wide. Like, he's just not even paying it. Like, he's just in full-on shock mode. She, on the other hand, is just laying there, just kind of looking around, taking stock. <laughs> is it possible to try to, like, get loose? Yeah. Uh... Strength Athletics. Give you rolling 2d6 plus your strength score and your athletic score. And if you have anything that might. I don't think I have anything that helps with that, so. 18 total. The quality of the cloth is not that strong, since it was made in 19th century. <laughs> Mostly rags they have you tied up with. You're able to get your hands lo loose out of the uh, bindings. Hmm. From there, you're able to get most of the other bindings off, including your mouth gag if you want to, unless you're going to pretend to still be tied up. I'm going to, like, pretend to be tied up for as long as possible. And actually, no, um, I'm going to kind of, like, are we standing up or are we, like, down on the ground? 
Um, you were tied up with your hands, and there is a, there was a small tie around your legs, so you were all of you were kind of laying on your sides. All right. Is it possible to like adjust myself to where you um like any of the anything else couldn't see my face other than the people in the cage? Uh, yeah, that will actually be coordination subterfuge. All right. Give me all my good stuff. Like it. <laughs> all right. So after I kind of like adjust a little bit, um, I kind of want to like seeing the man freaking out. I'm going to like make eye contact with the woman, move the gag out of the way just a little bit, and say, "All right." We're gonna need you to stay calm. We're gonna get out of this, okay? She just kind of nods at you. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to say, just stay quiet. Don't make any noises until we're ready to go. And I'm gonna start woken on, trying to get Ho untied. Alright, so you're doing that. Um, <clears throat> when you say try to stay quiet, she does kind of look pointedly at the other man who's sort of whimpering in the corner. Um. It's more a question of, like, should he be quiet? <laughs> I, I kind of just, like, look at him and I'm going to, like, place, like, a soft hand on his shoulder and I'm going to look him in the eyes. Calm down. Need you to be calm. We're gonna get out of this. Presence convinced. Oh shit, I'm bad at that. <laughs> um, convince. Presence. So you're yelling at him right now? <laughs> you need to calm down! You need to calm down! Adam running. Yeah, pretty much. I'm like so intense that I probably freak him out a little bit more. <laughs> Calm down or I will kill you. <laughs> we say that that roll is so bad that it actually works. He's more afraid of him than he is of the other guy. Um, class, this is where we get into use of story points. Uh, Normally, before I reveal my role, which did, which is just fine, we can still do that, but um, you can spend story points to up your uh, success if you want to up to an actual success. Okay, uh, how often do those refresh? I read something about it in the book, but I kind of forgot. Do what? Uh, how often do those, like, refresh or gain those back? I... That's are... actually part of the uh, XP, XP system in the Doctor Who RPG is at the end of the session, um, most of the time you're going to get, gain uh, story points as rewards. Okay. Yeah. Um... Uh, each character should have an overarching um, uh, goal that will take place over a few sessions. So like if, like if there's a trait you want or if there's a bad trait you want to get rid of, if you want to raise a skill or if you want to raise an attribute, things like that. Okay. So, story points, while they are giving out, like, EXP, you actually, like, don't use it to get skills and traits and stuff. That's just its own separate thing. Yeah, the story points are used as fuel during the game to okay. either uh, bump up your successes or to add more dice to your roll before you actually roll. Um. You can also use them to gain uh, insight or hints from me if you're, if you're lost as to what happened next. Can I spend two points to get another 2d6? Um, the first one, I believe, gets you 2d6, and then anything after that gets you additional 1d6. Oh, so, so I'll spend... Be 3d6. I'll spend one point then. Okay. Damn it. Well, subsequently, you could just... Couldn't you just spend one story point to make it a success? Yeah. Uh, it's like, if you if you don't know if we, whether you succeeded or failed, you can still add do the 2d6 and 1d6, or you can spend a point to actually change your your rating to a success. It brings it up by one. 
So but it can only be it can only be brought up to a regular success. Okay. Oh, uh, can I go with a regular success on trying to get this guy not to shit his pants? Yes. <laughs> okay. You do not yell at him like Bob Pat Goldthwait. <laughs> <laughs> so. Bob Pat Goldthwait makes him a perfect counselor. Right. Um. Yeah, I'm just like making strong eye contact, trying to like keep a sort of an authoritative voice, just like you need to calm down. And um, after I get. I learned this in police academy, I learned this in police academy. Calm down, sir. <laughs> this happens all the time in New York, trust me. The girl is freaking out right now, she's like, ugh. This again. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right. It's a regular, it's a regular Tuesday for you. Oh yeah. I, I've seen some stuff in my two years in as the NYPD. So your character's NYPD. Yep. Mainly because I know that, like, basically everything is English for this, but, like, I know nothing about the UK. That's so. Fine. We, we don't either. Well, whoa, I don't. whoa. Calm, calm your all there, sir. Calm <laughs> my, my home country. Um, Scotland is your home country? That's why you hate no, it so much. Sir. Not at all. Pretty sure it's Scotland. Your character's gonna get stabbed. Scotland forever. Remember that computer you were working on? It's gonna be uh, dismantled. Scotland See? forever. I went to the Scotland uh, Heritage Festival last week. It was fun. Got really drunk. Richard would go around murdering everybody. <laughs> right. We're not entirely sure why he hates Scotland so much, but he does. It's haggis. Fair. It's a fair reason to hate Scotland. It's the only contribution to the world cuisine. It's better than spotted dick, though. <laughs> that is a delicious pudding. I don't know, I've never had it. <laughs> it's a pudding with raisins. Oh, raisins are disgusting. You are a terrible human being. Because I think raisins are disgusting? Yes. Raisins are a beautiful thing. I agree. Raisins can go to hell, and they can go to hell and die. Raisins and die. I'm fine with raisins. If so, like, keep them out of desserts. if you die in hell, do you go to Mega Hell? You go to Mega Ultra Hell. Tartarus. You go to Tartarus' asshole. <laughs> but what happens if you die in Tartarus' asshole? Do you go um, up to Tartarus' uh, intestines? You can't. You cannot die in Tartarus' asshole. Because it's all for Tartarus. On the living. Zeus' butthole. How in Zeus' butthole. I actually watched that the other day. On the, on the flight home, I watched uh, The Rock. What? <laughs> There's a scene where he says, "How in Zeus's butthole did you get it out of here?" And I actually got sent to the uh, to the uh, principal's office for saying, for for correcting somebody because he said it was How in Zeus's asshole. And I said, "No, it's not How in Zeus's asshole. It's How in Zeus's butthole." And I got sent in the, to principal's because I said butthole, <laughs> but not asshole, <laughs> but not the asshole part. I'm like, come on, guys, really? So, like, what kind of confused me there for a second was it kind of sounded like. Uh, you're watching Dwayne in Zeus's butthole at first, uh, and that's kind of why I had to make sure that you explained it a little bit. Uh, I'm talking about the movie The Rock, not The Rock. <laughs> I actually thought you were talking about The Rock at first. <laughs> Forgot not, about that movie. <laughs> not Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I'm talking about the movie The Rock. With uh, Nicolas Cage? With Nicolas Cage and uh, Sean Connery. Right. I have not seen The Rock. Oh. It's a, it's about Alcatraz. What are they trying to do? Uh, terrorist they, person there. 
they um, take over Alcatraz because it's a fortified location, so they can sh shoot rockets out of it. It's kind of a stupid plot, but um, I like the movie. Mm -hmm. Klaus is uh, bringing Calm to the cage he is currently in. He is working on getting the girl free while also trying to keep the other guy calm as possible so as not to draw attention to them as yet. Okay. Right. Uh, once she's free, what are you What are you planning on doing? Um, untie him, and then once I get him untied, we'll come getting us out of the cage. Alton, Jenny, and Strax, and Sergei. Right, the Cave of Wonders. Yeah, you arrive at the dimensional shunt from Sir Heath's house. Sir Heath's house. <laughs> he begins showing off the cavern like it's the most wonderful convention in the history of mankind. <clears throat> Yes, that the uh, vast ship. He's like, that is the ship that we discovered that Zoroth was on, and people had escaped from, and the kith. All of the kith. Mm hmm. How many kith? Uh, Zoroth would know that more than I would. Fair enough. I understand they are a pernicious creature. Adam doesn't know what pernicious means. <laughs> Adam has a computer in front of him with Google on. <sighs> oh, really? Con continue your conversation. I will search. Per yes, they are very pernicious. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Starship is right in the middle of this huge cavern, which uh, he tells you that Zoroth created using the ship's engines. It was the most amazing thing he had ever seen, the most greatest feat of engineering. This is what the future holds, and he can't wait to see what else. Yes, definitely amazing. The ship is obviously damaged. <clears throat> there appears to be a huge hole in the side of the ship right near. Yeah, you can see they're trying to patch it up. But there does appear to be some sort of liquid leaking from the side of the ship. Mm. Um, is that from the blast? Yes. Unfortunately, that is the uh, result of my inadequacy and poor planning. The, dyna the dynamite I used was much in it. Apparently it just ripped a hole right in the side of the prison ship, allowing everyone to out to an escape. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, he takes you in further into the uh, cavern, that uh, cavern, showing you around the little lean-to town that's built up around there. You can actually see there are like homeless living down here in the lean to town. They're not chained up or anything either. They're actually there. There's uh, food lines and everything being run by the steam boards feeding them. Mm -hmm. In a building off far away, um, he tells us like that would be where Zorath is. He's currently in a foundry <clears throat> doing wonderful, wonderful things for all these people who have no limbs and whatnot. He's helping to restore them. Wonderful. It's about that time that Pike, Vastra, Percival, and Richard come through the other dimensional shunt across the cavern. Yes. Well, that's interesting. Real good, hey. It's real, real. 
Right away, Pike uh, identifies the ship as a conciliator prison capsule. Um, are we still all on our comms as you say that? Mm-hmm. 